Hello out there, wherever you may be. Uh, it is uh, my pleasure uh, to be presenting tonight the, uh, the rantings and the ravings of the members of the f very, very prestigious Fuck You fan club. Uh, I, I just want to take a moment to thank you for, uh, for, uh, for joining a, a club whose moniker is Fuck You and for hanging with me uh, for all of this time. And, uh, and hopefully, uh, it's, it, it, hopefully it's been a worthy investment and that uh, it's, it's brought you some uh, modicum of joy. And there's a word we, we rarely get to use nowadays. And, and it applies to fucking everything now because we have a modicum of fucking everything. That's what we get. Um, but I'm really, uh, and I want to thank all of you who sent in your rants. And if I'm not reading yours, it's only because of time constraints. Okay? And if you believe that, good luck. <laughs> you need to get out of the house, maybe take a walk. But it is good to see you all again, even though I'm not seeing you. Let's begin. Uh, this is... Richard Fuller, what the fuck is with Americans and leaf blowers? In most countries, they accept that if you have trees, those trees have leaves. It's nice. It's natural. But in America, no. We want the trees, but God help them if any of their leaves hit the ground. No. We need to use mini fucking jet engines at 7 a.m. in the morning to ensure that our sidewalks are as pristine as God made them. And if there aren't any leaves, well, too fucking bad. We'll still be there at 7 a.m., blowing the dust away off the sidewalk. What the fuck? There are a lot of civic issues that I care about, but I would never have guessed that leaf blowers would be the one that strikes the largest fire in my heart. Why the fuck are we doing this? Trees have leaves. Leaves fall on the ground. There are leaves on the ground. Just fucking leave them there. This is uh, from uh, Charles H. Uh, the requirement to try and find a better VA doctor. Howdy. In my first meeting with uh, government employee uh, Liepert, I noted he was immediately hostile and repeatedly refused to provide overdue care. This was reported in my soon-to-follow letter to the director in Fayetteville. Soon after, he repeatedly refused to provide post-surgical medications after repeatedly losing the paperwork. Team 2 delayed the surgery so many times, the real doctor canceled the surgery. The post-op prescription was delivered 19 days after the last surgery was canceled. As it, at this time, I peacefully and legally utilized my First Amendment right to publicly criticize the VA's malpractice. Branson VA personnel repeatedly and illegally harassed me by making false police reports claiming I was on VA property. Branson police repeatedly explained to VA personnel I was not violating the law or uh, 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 was I on VA property. The Veterans Administration illegally blacklisted me further, violating my First Amendment rights and committing malfeasance. Since December, I have repeatedly provided the VA with my real doctor's order for blood work. I've also repeatedly gone to the clinic, and been repeatedly refused. Branson instructed me to call for an appointment. I have called repeatedly to set up the way overdue blood work. Branson has failed to set up the ordered lab work. The VA has repeatedly refused to respond to my overdue health care and thereby repeatedly and deliberately endangered my life and my health. This seems strange as Branson has provided a flu shot and x-rays this year. Pro please provide a list of VA doctors available in Branson so I may do research to who to try next. Veterans are only allowed to have 
three malpractice doctor charges, changes, and then are stuck. I'll repeat that. Veterans, veterans are only allowed to have three malpractice doctor changes and then are stuck. This comes to us from Charles H., Honorable, Decorated, Disabled U.S. Marine Corps veteran. Note, I just made an appointment for my friend Derek's cancer surgery. One phone call and the appointment is next Tuesday. All done. My dog has much better health care than honorable veterans. Um, Charles, I'm sorry for this, and it's a constant refrain. And for whatever the leader seems to have said about changes in the VA system, obviously certain things haven't been done. And uh, if anyone out there who is uh, who knows someone who could help Charles H. out um, in terms of the problems that he's facing with the VA, uh, if you can get in touch with our website, that would be great. And uh, we'll see if we can help out, Charles. Um, I wouldn't be a good help because I'd just be yelling and screaming and then then they really would, they would, they would not only put you, they wouldn't even put you at the back of the line, Charles, they would take you out of the line. This is from Kyle Carson. Hey, Lewis, I live in Washington State, Snohomish County to be exact. As you know, public schools are closed. Both of my boys, 14 and 18, are doing school at home. This is a fucking joke. For example, my 18-year-old son on Fridays, the, the most of time he, he just has to do is check in, okay? Are you fucking kidding me? Give these kids something to do, for fuck's sake. Maybe an assignment. Also, class, if, if, if that's what they're called, are an hour and 45 minutes long, and there are only three classes per day, a normal day. Otherwise, is six classes for 6.5 hours a day. The governor of Washington State, Governor Inslee, has the state on this open, slowly, like, fucking dimmer switch. So what opens first is, is not the school, the church, or child care, but bars, <laughs> which is fine because with two teen boys home all day, I need a fucking drink. I am envious of you, m Mom, because I won't live that long. And the way it's going, people born in the 70s probably won't get Social Security. So I'm fucked. I enjoyed ranting from a loyal fan, Kyle. That's it. I am envious. Oh, you're envious of your mother. I got it, Kyle. Or your mother. Uh, uh, or my mother, maybe. Um, <clears throat> yes, probably my mother. But maybe of your own. But the, it's funny. It's really good. All he has to do is check in. Got you know, to be honest. I wish early on. I wish they had a thing for me where I just had to check in. That might have helped. Ten weeks of trying to figure out things that I'm supposed to do. A check in would have been nice. This is from Kristen Brown. Uh, this is uh, this is actually a subject much like leaf blowers. I have to say that. We've, I mean, this is another subject that has never been brought up, which is what the fuck you fan clubs about, really, is folks who focus on things that nobody else is focused on. So what is the scam with collectibles? <laughs> Since being furloughed, I'm trying to make some moolah. Wow, moolah. That is tremendous, Kristen, because that's a word we, we never hear anymore. <laughs> by making some mula by selling some of the collectible limited editions complete with certificate of authenticity, no doubt, that you have, that are sitting around collecting dust. Surprise, no money to be made here. Mind you, I am not foolish enough to believe that I could get what I paid for them, but, but something would be nice. So what is a collectible? an item that is worth far more than it was originally sold for because of its rarity and or popularity. So apparently, a limited edition is not rare, and my items lost the popularity contest. Great. Now the foundation of what I always thought to be good taste is shaken. I will never be able to look at an item again and say, hey, that's very nice, or what a piece of crap, and trust my own judgment. 
So what am I to do with my fucking 2020 presidential campaign just set? I guess I will follow the advice from Indiana Jones. Bury it in my backyard in a thousand years, maybe two will be worth something. Then again, probably not. Checkmate. Kristen, I would really wish to know what the collectibles that you bought were. Which really, with the, with the certificate of authenticity, if you could let me know that, that would be really good. That would make my day. Thank you. This is from John Koshin. I just finished listening to the lovely rant submitted to you by that epidemiologist. Uh, that was uh, done, a, a, I guess, a few weeks ago, and it was uh, one of the first of the virtual rants that I read. As a retired teacher who, uh, with experience teaching primary school and high school, I feel compelled to give a rant in return. I will grant you that without having the opportunity to prepare those kids for the upcoming assignments about countries, it was not realistic to expect seven-year-olds to know what a country is. In Europe, that would not have been a problem. But in the United States, where kids associate Mexico with burritos, in Canada with ice hockey, that's a different matter. I will admit it was not clever. However, I ask myself, what has this man, and his wife for that matter, done to educate their children? I grew up interacting with other kids my age. Do you remember the how and why books? Do you remember the illustrated classic comic books? Oh, I do. Uh, I do. and I Not only do I remember them, John, but something that you don't mention here is how many of us actually read those instead of the book and then did book reports or uh, prepared for tests that way. Uh huh. My first introduction to classical music was a Bugs Bunny cartoon featuring Franz Liszt's Hungarian Rhapsody. In short, I grew up in an environment rich in stimuli. Kids these days are little more than iPad zombies watching influencers talk about rap music and makeup. Case in point, I was teaching 14-year-olds physics, and the subject of the day was electricity. The book called for some stupid experiment that I, realist that I am, deemed too complicated. So instead, I instructed my assistant to get each pupil a piece of insulated wire, a battery, and a small light bulb. Their assignment was to make the light bulb light up. It took the little shits nearly an hour to figure out something I and my friends back in the day had figured out at age 10. We built forts out of old planks and fooled around with magnifying glasses. I played with matches, nearly burnt the house down, and suffered the consequences. At one point, I blew out every fuse in the house, but I would not recommend anybody try that now. This is what we are denying our children. Now, when parents even regulate play dates for them, do not put a child's block on the iPad. Do not give them one in the first place. A library card is much more useful. If you're in an area where they allow you to get into the library, John, there's a bit of a question and a conundrum. So yes, do not expect a seven-year-old to know what a country is. Instead, try asking him or her who their friends are in the street and where they live. Most of their friends are faces on a smartphone screen. I used to take the empty pop bottles to the local smoke and gift shop and buy a comic from the proceeds. Does your kid know where the local shop is? Is there even a local shop or do you have to go to the mall? We've not only given up our responsibility to teach our kids ourselves, we've robbed them of the environment they need to thrive. So do not blame the teachers for not adapting to the impossible demands made on them at a time where we are all searching for new ways to live our lives and do our jobs. I think, John, that you were right and uh, the epide epidemiologist was right. And I think that really covers uh, a great deal of, deal of turf, the both of you, and uh, I appreciate what but, but, but both of you had to say. I was born and raised during this time period in uh, where I did go down to a place. It was a, we had a local pharmacy where you could pick up your Coke and hand back your bottles and stuff and pick up your, you think, I mean, it is, it's a totally different, uh, and it's not just uh, these things that are fucking things up. It's the whole way in which it is out there. It's the, there, you know, there's no town square. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll be talking about that in my new video, Town Squares, how to make one, uh, 
and how to build one from the center out. I won't be doing that. This is uh, from Andy Kreutz. Uh, one, of the, the, one of the great nights of Turing was when two sisters were in the audience. Initially, uh, they had, one of them, I believe, a, a while before had actually written in a rant and was yelling about her sister, and then the other one had written in a rant and yelling about her, this. The, the other sister wrote in a rant, and then both of them showed up on the same night. And it's on, it's on YouTube, and if you look up two, two sisters yelling at each other, Louis Black, you should be able to find it. It's spectacular. It is spectacular. So this is from one of the sisters, and I truly expect that the other sister will be responding shortly. This is from uh, Andy Kreutz. The worst part of my sister's rant wasn't that she insinuated I was a drunk or that she called me a twat. <laughs> my grandmother taught me that word when I pointed to a cow's anatomy on the farm as a young child and asked, what's that? Twat reminds me of my grandmother, so I'm not offended. And grandma didn't raise a pussy. I'd love to spend Thanksgiving with your family. I mean, that needs to be videoed. Not a series. Not a series. Not a series. Just Thanksgiving dinner. All 12 hours of it. Why are people so surprised that Trump won the presidency? Seriously. I don't understand. Haven't they ever played Monopoly with their fucking family? Evil. Younger sister collects all boardwalk spaces and builds a shit ton of hotels. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. You should have used your teacher's salary to buy Re Reading Railroad, bitch. Enjoy sleeping under it. Next time, buy more fucking property and have a get out of jail free card, dumbass. Our country is for sale to the highest bidder. Lady Liberty might as well be wearing thigh high boots and crotchless panties under her tunic. Trump 2020 supporters got mad at my sister's rant. She specifically said she keeps her mouth shut at school. Let's put some iron balls in a nut cup back on Lady Liberty and get back to work. Picture it. A middle school teacher on November 3rd, 2020, wakes up smiling, skips to her car before going to school to teach her students how eating Tide Pods could give them a fucking tummy ache. She gets her mocha, white chocolate, soy milk, non-fat frappuccino at her local coffee shop and winks at the drive through worker as she drives the speed limit to the polls. She smiles to the volunteer as she checks in and collects her Dixon Ticonderoga number two pencil. God, I remember those. Oh, boy, with the little eraser on top. She carefully fills in the little bubble next to her hopeful, slightly delusional, possibly suffering from Alzheimer's, Democratic candidate who has promised free health care, a raise for all teachers, and puppies nationwide. She inserts her ballot into a little machine and instantly feels better. Life is fucking good. On her way out, she's practically knocked over by her still hungover, running late twat sister, who is up late working and never gets the summer off. Her sister grabs whatever writing utensil they hand her while making sure to show her ID and quickly scribbles on her ballot next to the Republican candidate. She shoves it in the machine and yells, Not today, bitch! I'm the Yindi, her yang! And that's how democracy fucking works. This is Jonathan Rogers. As a teacher in a school that is currently hybrid, I'm fucking tired of parents bitching that their kids are not in school every day or that their kids should be able to take their masks off if they wish. Listen here, typhoid mommy. I do not want to die because your little angel has never had to survive a minor inconvenience and you can't stand to hear them whine at home. And by the way, the last essay you wrote for your baby was pure shit. Um, I have a special guest now. I'm going to get, he'll be arriving and he will be reading the following to you. Um, we have been doing all the proper things that should be done. We're a pod uh, for this week. We've all been done our little things, and so we can spend this time together. And, and I thought I would take advantage of his good nature and his brilliance as an actor. So let me go get him. Here you are. All right. And this is from Jacob Peters. <laughs> uh, Jacob Peters writes in a very... Very happy to be uh, doing his rant. <clears throat> 
Dear Lewis, I am writing to you about my father, who over the past two decades has turned into a conspiracy theorist nut job. It all started after 9-11. Some asshole lent him a documentary about how 9-11 was an inside job, and down the rabbit hole of insanity he went. Now, he calls every national shooting a false flag event created by the Democrats to take everybody's guns and COVID-19, a pandemic designed to make Trump look bad. Every time he opens his mouth, he's got something kookier and kookier to say. Everything is a hoax by the Democrats, according to him. Global warming, coronavirus, school shootings. Christ, you'd think if the Democrats were that clever, they'd actually be able to win a fucking election. I could go on, but uh, I'm trying to keep my blood pressure down. I'm afraid my brain might hemorrhage if I think about it too, too long. None of this is helped by the fact that last year he got rid of his cable, and now crackpots on YouTube have become his only source of information and entertainment. He tried to send me clips of some of these wackos, but I told him I don't want to end up on some government watch list. I do my best not to get into any kind of political subject around him, but he finds a way to inject his crazy beliefs into any conversation. We'll be talking about something like the weather, and out of nowhere he'll say, yeah, it is a nice day. And did you know Michelle Obama's actual name is Michael? She's really a man? He is out of his fucking mind. And, of course, he just, uh, he, well, he loves Donald Trump. He thinks he's the only one telling it like it is, whatever the fuck that means. Leading up to the 2016 election, he just kept repeating, it's rigged. They're rigging it for Hillary. And then Trump won, but he's still saying it was rigged. Christ, Lou, he looked me dead in the eyes and said, you know what you've got? You have got the Trump derangement syndrome. I can't take it anymore. The constant stream of bullshit that comes out of his mouth is too much for me. The migraines I get when speaking with him, or it's all I can do to stop from screaming, shut the fuck up, shut the fuck up. A few months ago, he said to me he couldn't believe how anybody could be so stupid that they'd vote for the Democrats. And then he asked me whether George W. Bush was a Democrat or a Republican. Takes your fucking breath away, doesn't it? And the worst part about all this, he's a Canadian. He doesn't even live in the States, nor has he ever. Jesus Christ, he doesn't even vote in the Canadian elections. What, what should I do? What should I do? He's not too, too, too old or feeble enough for me to put him in a home or, or push him down the stairs when his back is turned. <laughs> Your pal, Jacob. Oh, here. That was great. <laughs> that was fun. That's a fun one. Yeah, that was very good. <laughs> Thank you, Jacob. Thank you, Mark. Oh. And I have one more. And uh, we, will say, we will bid you adieu. I don't know why I said that. I, I really say, I, I never say that. And it's dinner time. And uh, Lewis can, can, Lewis needs, Lewis is feeling peckish, okay? Um, this is from Stephen uh, Brassard. Dear humans, I've had seven months, two days, and 18 and a half fucking hours in mostly complete isolation to think about this. So if you think it's a little disjointed and rambling, then go fuck yourself. This virus is yet another warning shot across the bow of humanity. For the purposes of this exercise, even though I'm agnostic, I'm going to stipulate that there is in fact a God that created everything, including our place of residence, in six days, resting on the seventh. I, however, have a problem with the resting part. If he built the universe and our world, complete with animals, fish, plants, butterflies, etc., etc., and the first two of many idiots to come, he, he didn't rest on the seventh day. He fucking retired. He went out <coughs> and bought a goddamn lazy boy. 
the one with the back massage and the auto blowjob features, and in a limited supply of Orville Renbach. And since that day, he's been watching the longest running situational comedy tragedy in recorded history. He has been observing with growing horror that the two legged fuckwads are doing to his creation. He sent his son down to give us some simple instructions about how to behave and how to look after the place. Kind of a walking, talking owner's manual. And we showed our appreciation for this by nailing the poor bastard to a piece of wood. Really? Then we went out and built a bunch of buildings that we could congregate in and ask him for help and pray that when we die, we can come up and live with him. To seal the deal, we decided, for I'm not sure what fucking reason, to decorate these buildings with a replica of the piece of timber that we stapled the kid to. In my view, the reality of our current situation is as follows. One, he made us smart enough to look after ourselves so he wouldn't have to, he wouldn't have to babysit us for the entirety of his golden years. Would you look after your demented offspring forever? Take the vaccines. Wear the goddamn masks. Stop breeding like rats and raping every square inch of the planet to only support only too many people and nothing else, which, incidentally, is why all these aberrant viruses keep popping up. When you have enough, give the rest away or stop working and give the job to someone that needs it. This part could have been a few chapters. Add to it as you wish. Two, when he retired, he downsized to a two-bedroom condo, and the second bedroom is full of spare shit that he collected while the place was under construction. When you die, you're not going up there. You're bug food to get them to put you in a hole and return your energy to the circle of life. Might be the only fucking productive thing you ever accomplish. In closing, stop fucking the place and each other up. Or he may decide to finish the job of eliminating us from the planet by simply watching us do it, which is going to be slow and very painful. Or perhaps he accelerates it somewhat so that there's something left for the critters to work with. Fuck us all. And good night. Good night to you all. Thank you for joining me. Thanks for all that you wrote. It was a pleasure reading it. Thanks to my friend Mark Lynn Baker, our special guest. Take care of each other. Be safe. Be well. This too shall pass.